All right, this is my wacky, highly inefficient way of converting hammer brushes to models. Please note there is a much more efficient way to do this. It's called proper. Look it up. <clears throat> this is a... Uh, like, the way I'm, I'm doing it is uh, pretty much some ass-backwards self-taught technique that probably nobody else in the entire world uses. So, um, yeah. Also, all the tools I'm using will be in the description. So, I don't realize. Okay. So, let's say you want to put lots and lots of detail into a relatively big map. And, uh, you can do that without turning them into models just fine, but eventually. Source has this uh, really strict brush limit, and it's like 8,192, uh, 8, I think. And when it reaches that, the map starts crashing and shit. So to compensate, besides making smaller levels, is to replace the brushes with models. There's pretty much no limit to the amount of models in a map. Like, this is obviously, like, blocky-ass brushwork, but I turned it into a model so it'll fucking run. Because the map is near its, uh, brush limit. That's model. That's model. This isn't a model. This is probably a bad example because it's, like, really low brush count. <laughs> like, it should be more detailed, but... Whatever. So, uh... Grab your collection of brushes, make it a funk detail, all that jazz. And, uh, copy it. Close out your current map, make a new one. Paste your funk detail. Now we gotta zoom in and shit. <coughs> Now we gotta get it to the exact center of the map, which is that red, blue, and green thing. And, uh... Probably be, be a good idea to straighten this up. I can do it. Come on! Are these lines straight? I wouldn't want it being ever so slightly crooked. That would be bad! Or at least I think I would. <laughs> Hammer, don't be a douche! So, yeah. Use these green lines that are barely visible for reference of where the center is. It doesn't have to be exact, just get it cl as close as you can. And, uh... Save it as whatever you're gonna name it. This, in this case, will be, uh... Tram elevator... Rail... And we're gonna use, uh... Well, it says Object Viewer, but it's called... Uh, well, it's called Crafty. Uh, tram, elevator, rail. And, uh... Texture's missing here, because, uh... Well, if I had like half a tour or whatever installed, it would probably be showing. Don't really know how to work any custom profiles, so I just do this. Go on the GCF scape. Guess our missing texture.
going to need two copies of the VMT. We'll see why in a minute. I'm just using the Counter-Strike profile for uh, Crafty so it knows where to look for the textures. Yeah, it's backwards, I know. Uh, <laughs> this is more of a reference for myself if I <laughs> ever go so long without modding I actually forget how to do this. So, fucking help. Metal. Uh, I need to get the actual texture. And uh, you're going to want to format your VMT names like this if you're doing it this way. Oh wait. The name of the model and then material underscore zero. And if you have multiple textures it'll be, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, etc. Always change this the vertex generic if it isn't already, because that's what models use. Get rid of this keywords and uh, anything with like two slashes in them is like that is unused so you get rid of that if you want and we'll start crafty crafty has a nasty habit of randomly crashing by the way so it is tram elevator real right? <laughs> Rail. And now it's visible. Now we can correctly export the texture as a TGA, so XSI can read that shit. <laughs> Export it. Um, yes. Now we have these object files, or OBG, OBJ, or whatever. These can, uh, work with, uh, multiple model editors, I believe, but you can probably just import it straight into <laughs> XSI, but I'm gonna do it this way. Oh, not the whole thing. Okay. Make sure all the directories are right. Okay, now you'd think you'd be done there, but no. If you compile the obj model straight in the studio compiler, the Model's lighting is going to be all screwed up and black and whatnot. So, let's see. Our compiled model, which isn't quite right in the head. Stop it. Decompile this real quick. Uh, Studio Compiler also has a nasty habit of crashing. <laughs> because it's coded like bricks. Got our decompiled model. Go over there. Delete our buggy ass model. And. Import SMD and texture path wherever the TGA is located. Put it on textured so we can see the damn thing, and there it is. And uh, apply <laughs> texture UVs or whatever. I'm not even sure if this is required.
and export. Now we have a proper SMD to compile into a proper model. Although the collision model will be inaccurate, but most of the time it doesn't matter that much. Oh wait. Get a shitload of warnings cause studio compiler just finicky like that, but whatever. Ignore. Okay, reboot hammer or shit won't load. Uh, doesn't exactly refresh the uh, models and whatnot. I go into a test map. Hope my SSD don't explode. Even though this isn't fraps. <laughs> fraps scrambles hard drives. No, not really. Worst tutorial ever! And there it is! Notice the god-awful collision model, but... You can manage that better in uh, doing the proper way. Or know what the fuck you're doing in XSI. Uh, put a couple of them for the shits and giggles. Hopefully it won't explode the map. Let's put some lighting here. Let make this dimmer. And compile. Test map mod folder. And there's the model. <clears throat> and there's our model. Terrible collision model. Make sure the model didn't destroy our um, portals. Every once in a rare while, um, models will like corrupt your level level of detail in plot for whatever reason because there's a some funny geometry the, the compiler didn't like or whatever but 99 percent of the time it should be fine all right that's it thanks for uh watching why does XSplit do that Eh.